going to zoom for a second. Ali, I can't go into the Zoom place. It's out oh, the Zoom place. Charlie? Are we live, guys? Yeah. I just have a problem to finding the Zoom place. Are you, can you see the Zoom? Charlie, it's can't get a zoom is just press the zoom up at the bottom yeah i did i'm coming that's why one second yeah yes okay guys hello and uh, welcome to everyone i think Turo, you start yeah let's start right yes just all right let's go guys Hi and welcome to our online webinar with the topic of the art of sports networking brought to you by Football Age of Education and German Foundation for Integration. My name is Turo Laras and I will host today's program. So just a short introduction to the topic. So many of us are dreaming of their, of their favorite job or they want, to, they want to develop themselves inside their job what they have now. But unfortunately, it's not always easy to reach out to the people who can help accomplishing these goals. So that's why a strong network is key to professional success. And this is also why we have organized this webinar with free pros and networking, who will share their experience with us from everyday sports life. So I'm really looking forward to that. First, as a speaker, we have Daniel G, who is a sports lawyer from London. And he's the author of the book, Done Deal. Second, we have Misha Sher, who is the global vice president of Mediacom Sports and Entertainment, also from London. And last but not least, we have, we have Dr. Erkut Sud, who is a player agent and a lawyer himself, all three from London. So thanks, guys, for being with us today and sharing your experiences. We're really looking forward to it. So let's start with Erkut. Erkut, what can you tell us about networking? Uh, first of all, uh, Turul, thanks for the uh, introduction. Thanks a lot. And I'm uh, more than happy to share today the stage, I would say, if you can say that when you do an online webinar with my colleagues and friends, uh, Misha Sher and Daniel G. It's uh, fantastic to have you today here on board. And, uh, and hopefully all of us working in different kind of uh, areas in football, we can help to explain a about the networking, so thanks for being with us. And uh, yes, I would just start first and explain what I think about networking, how I think the areas of networking is important for you. And I prepared a very small presentation for that. We were discussing actually before with uh, Misha and then will we do one or not? So I just prepared the, the tiny one. I hope it will help to give you a better understanding. So I'm just going into the presentation. I might take some notes as well, Erka. Yeah, <laughs> I I don't think you you need to uh, need to take some notes, my friends. So, but uh, so now I'm opening up the presentation. So you let me know once it's there. And yes. oh, I can see Misha and Daniel in my presentation. Looks so, fantastic. Yeah, looks good, huh? Okay, let's start. So. First of all, I think this is something for me personally, I think is the way to do networking for myself. This is what I developed for myself over the years. And uh, I believe networking is so important. I invest so much time in it and try to make myself as well better in networking in sports. So number one is creating the network, right? This is a stage for me. So I see it always in three stages. So I'm thinking, Create the network. Yeah, I will talk more in detail in the next slide about that. But this is number one for you and your brain. There are three stages. Second stage is, is the most important one, I believe. And this is 90% of people failing on that stage, I think personally, is maintaining the network. People create network and then people forget about that network. So maintaining the network is one of the, if not the most important part in networking, in my personal opinion. And then last but not least, number three is, whilst you, after you maintain it, you have to use that network, 
right? And how to use the network in the right way, I'll try to explain you as well. So, okay, we have three stages, very simple. Create your network, maintain it, and then use it, right? So let's start with number one, creating your network. If you think about creating a network, what kind of opportunities you have to create it? Number one, of course, there are networking events you can attend. I mean, there are many than you or Misha, me, we have some of them together attended. Some of them is, for example, SoccerX is an event that a lot of people know, and or Leaders is an event, a sports event, as well. FAPS, if you don't know, Football Agent and Business Summit, it's coming every, no, it comes every November, and as well as Premier Sports Network and so on. Also awards, football awards. So <clears throat> there is a lot of networking opportunity in these kind of events, yeah? So I always hear about people, hey, I go to these events, but I can't really talk to top VIP people. So I think events should be open and without VIP, right? I, I have the problem when I see go to, I myself personally, seven, eight years ago, when I went the first time into networking events, there was always a VIP section and the normal section. So people buying into an event to network, why would you separate them into VIP and normal? So that doesn't make sense for me. I think you should go somewhere where you can really meet people and not just sit and listen. It's also important, but also try to meet people. So secondly, I go quickly because Dan and Misha will be angry. We have a timeline to <laughs> hold on. So is the online platform. I think online is so important. Digital world, the online world today, it's so important. It's becoming more important every day. And Misha knows more about that and he will explain more about that. But I think one opportunity there could be you go on LinkedIn. Yeah, you create a, from your company an account and you can meet people there or personally. It's professional in comparison to all the other social media platforms, I think personally. This is, for example, an opportunity for you to meet people as well in the virtual world. Number three is football matches. Yeah, football matches, or you can call it tournaments, especially in winter time. There are youth tournaments in, uh, in December, January, February, all over Europe. Youth tournaments where you can meet parents, football players, scouts, media people, all in the same place. You go there for the whole day. You pay a little bit of entry. That's it. But you can meet so many people. So think about attending. Also football matches. You go and watch an under-17 game, an under-19 game. So there you can meet parents, you can meet players afterwards. So again, you meet scouts, sporting direct. It's important to go to these places. I know personally how difficult it is to talk to people at these places. So I sometimes, when I was like seven, eight years ago, I was walking towards a person and I literally just before reaching, I was turning back. So I couldn't, I couldn't talk. So I was like, come on, try next. One more time, just someone was coming, I stopped again. So then it worked again. So it's really, some people of you are like me, I was really shy in talking to people in the beginning, how to approach someone, right? Who are you, just a student? So, but then you overcome it by doing it. You made some mistakes. Some people might be, hey, go away. It doesn't make a difference. You just try and work it out and you will find your own way in the end, yeah? So going to these places, also volunteering, a club is also a good entry into a club, right? So when you volunteer in a football club during football matches or at the training ground, so you will meet people, you meet hierarchy, you meet people who are your boss maybe there, so they might put you in contact with others. Again, this is also an opportunity for you. One major also for someone who, is, who wants to do, for example, a master or who is at university and thinking about doing something, you should do a master if, if you know already you want to work in sports, you should do a master somewhere where you have this practical part, where you go and visit places like football clubs, like federations, uh, big brands in sports like Adidas, Nike, Puma. You should think about the university where you can go and do that. There are a couple of them outside, like the Football Business Academy in Geneva is one of them. There are like others ones doing it that day. They have also the connection for an internship. You should think about that where you also get network and connection to internships, you can build your network while you are a student. Yeah, very important, don't underestimate. So have your network done or before you finish the university, it's a big advantage, right? And not after university. Last but not least, number five, I always say you have to network everywhere. Yeah, there's no ending, there's no way you can say, I'm just networking here and there. 
network everywhere because you never know who you will meet where. It could be at the airport, it could be on the plane. You never know what kind of doors that person might open you. And one thing which I have learned is never underestimate anyone. This is really never think like, oh, that person isn't uh, important enough. I'm not spending my time. You never know what kind of position or what kind of door that person can open you. I mean, we might have a lot of stories. We'll talk later on that, but just one thing, never do that. Yeah. And again, you might know introducers. Yeah. You might have friends who can introduce you to someone else. Use that network as well. Right. If you know someone in football, ask them nicely. Can you introduce me to someone else? This is also a way to do networking. Yeah. And, uh, in the end, I always believe that every one of you will find your own way in creating the network. Yeah, everyone has his own weaknesses and strengths, but you will find your own and in your own journey. Yeah. And one well, also very important thing is when you network, add value to others is very important. Try to add value to others. This is one crucial part of networking. Try to make others better. Try to share your knowledge with others. So on a long term, it will come back to you. Don't accept something if you do for someone a favor. Hey, I did that for you. You need to give back something. Never do that. Do something, and just leave it. Yeah. So add value is so important in my opinion. So I go forward. Otherwise, I will talk too much. And Misha and Dan will be angry. Second part, I told very important, maintaining the network how often you should reach out, yeah? Again, there is no way to say once a month, once a week. No, it's again, every person you're in touch with is different. Think about birthdays, think about Christmas, think about like celebration days where you can send a message and keep in touch. Think about that person, if a sporting director of a football club, if they just won a game, congratulate. Sometimes share knowledge with them. And then once a year, twice a year, invite them for a coffee. So build it up, you will feel it. When is the right time? You might make mistakes, don't worry, it's a part of the game, yeah? And how, yeah, how should you stay in contact with them? I just said, yeah, it's like, everything is like, every single person is different. You will learn how you will stay in contact with them. That means through phone calls, emails, but I always believe emails is a good start for someone you don't know, or if someone introduces you through WhatsApp, through a message is also a way, but emails is good. And after an email, you can do a follow-up call, say, Thanks for introduction and do a follow-up call. Maybe we can have a phone call. So you already meet someone on, on, the, on the phone and later on you can meet someone. Number one, email. Number two, phone call. Number three, face-to-face. -face. Yeah. What should you discuss? Obviously, besides the business you are, you can also discuss about the general things in life, but mainly the person, what he's interested in. Research about the people you want to in touch with. What do they like? What, are, what is their position, where they're coming from, where did they went to university? Try to find things which you can talk about. Maybe you have the same thing. I was just, interestingly, this week, I was talking to a sporting director in Germany in one of the Bundesliga clubs. That guy was interesting. I didn't know he was born in the same city like me and he was born at the same day like me. And I was, and I played soccer against the guy when I was in a youth team. I didn't know. We found out when we were talking. So very interesting. You never know. So do the research. Yeah, it's very important. Speaking online versus meeting in person. Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you get introduced to someone in America, you can't meet them right away. But keep the relationship and hopefully one day you meet them in person, which is important, I think. Have the face-to-face, -face, the meeting in person and create the relationship. Yeah, and build on it. Let's move forward. So number three, and then I will be done. Monetizing, yeah, using, let's, in the end, using the network you created and maintained is like the last part is using the network. How do you monetize, right? So you build up a network, yeah, over a long period. You don't meet someone today, right? Someone is introducing you. And two weeks later, you ask him, hey, how are you? He says, I'm good. And one week later, you say, hey, by the way, do you need this one? Or do you need that player? So that's not the way it should be. You know, you have to build up the relationship. You will feel it when is the right time to do business with that person. So don't and never rush into it. Yeah. Take your time, relax, and it will come. It will come by itself. Yeah. And sharing, guys. I can't say it enough. Share your knowledge, share your wisdom, share what you know with people to make them better. Yeah. Introducing one of your close contacts to someone else 
it will benefit you. Not today, but later. Some people think, and I met so many in the football business, they keep uh, uh, people's network or people's relationship for themselves. They don't want to share. They say, oh, you know, I, I know the uh, director of football at this club in the Premier League, right? Uh, if you want something from him, you have to go through over me just. Like, I, I don't share that knowledge, my friend. It's impossible. If you know someone good enough, if you are close to someone in, in your network and is a good person, you can introduce that person directly to the guy in the club. Don't be afraid of losing something. Yeah. Of course, you shouldn't introduce everyone, but the ones you think it makes sense, introduce powerful people to each other. In the long way, it will definitely help you. So don't be afraid of sharing your knowledge and your contacts with others. I think it's very important. So last but not least, I'm finishing and I'm saying whenever you're upcoming in sports business or already established, you need to make networking a regular activity. So very important. And as I say thank you for my part. And then I just give the word to Misha, right? Misha, you're the second. I think it's Daniel. I can go. I can go. Yeah, um, I don't mind. It's up to you. Sure, I can. Uh, you want me to go? I can go. Um, well, thanks for that. That was uh, that was great. <laughs> Obviously, some very useful and some familiar, um, some very familiar uh, messages in there. I um, I think what I've done is I've put together four slides as well. Just something very simple. Some of it is sort of touching on on the um, on the subjects that you just on uh, on the areas you just you just mentioned, Erkid. And what I wanted to do is I I was when I was when I was thinking about this webinar, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to find some examples, three or four examples in my in my own life, in my own career, where uh, where particular networking skills I felt came came in very handy. So how you can actually see things, you know, the types of things that you were just talking about, how I you know how I sort of applied them in my uh, in my in my everyday life. So let me sh let me share my um, let me share my screen with you. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, let's so see. you have a presentation. I have a presentation. I was yeah. I didn't want to tell you, oh. but I'm gonna surprise you. So, I'm the odd one out, guys. I don't um, have a presentation. What am I gonna do? <laughs> Let me see. So, um, so a couple of I, I'll just share a couple of a couple of my stories. If you you know if if you don't mind, um, you know, Eric uh, Eric had just mentioned at the very end of, of his uh, um, of, of his part that you know. Networking is networking is a habit. It's something you have to develop. It's something you have to make part of your life to you know to get better at it. To be, um, you know, it's like it's like an athlete. You have to you have to train. You have to improve, and it's something that just becomes quite natural. And you know, when I, I'm sure there's quite a few people on this uh, you know on this webinar who are probably sitting there and thinking, where do I even start? I'd love to get into this industry. I don't know anyone. I've never worked in it. Um, and I was in exactly the same position, um, you know, in 2005, I didn't know anyone in this industry. Um, I took a chance and decided to come over here and do my, do my, uh, do my master's, which, you know, or could touch that as well. We could do it through university, but what I, I, at that point in my life, I made it a habit to, um, to reach out and to try to meet people and, uh, try to broaden my network every single day. So you start with nothing, but if you reach out to one individual a day, for example, you can imagine what your, um, not only how, how much better and more effective you get, but how much your network will grow over a course of a year. So, and that's exactly what I found. So over, over time, um, when I reached out to people, when I, when I expressed interest in them, when I wanted to just get 50 minutes of their time to get a coffee, more often than not, people were very, very receptive. Um, and they did give me 15 minutes of your time. And then it's your responsibility or that's the opportunity for you to develop that relationship to a point where you can meet with that individual again and again and that, in, and that, relationship, uh, and that relationship evolves. But the bottom line is that, you know, like, like anything else in life, it, doesn't, it won't come to you. You have to get out there. You have to proactively, uh, as uncomfortable as it may seem, you have to proactively get out and... Um, and really, I think at the heart of it has to be the interest that you show in other people. It's not just about the fact that you want to get into the industry. It's about your fascination with other people's stories. How do they get into it? What their day-to-day -day life is like? What do they like? What they don't like? 
you'll learn a great deal, you'll bond with people. Um, so that, you know, for me, it made a huge difference. I got into a habit of doing that when I started, you know, and, and you know, eight or nine my, uh, years later, I was, you know, I had an amazing job um, of work, you know, working with, working with Pele. And I would have never got there had I, you know, had I not made that a, a, a habit and got on people's radar and, and, and built a network that, that enabled me to, to sort of, to, to, to be front of mind and to have the sort of relationships that lead to, um, lead to new opportunities. Um, the other, uh, the other point, again, not to, not to repeat what Orca said, is is the point about giving without without expectations. So really, just a really really uh, important skill, not just not just in networking, but just in general. I think if you're the type of individual where whatever you happen to be doing, you might be looking after a player, or you might know um, you might know people in a certain country, or you have access to certain information. Whatever that happens to be, where whatever role you're in. Um, if you're in position to help other people, you should always look to do so just because it's a great thing to do. Um, you know, the industry is, it seems like a big industry, but it's actually quite small. And if you become the type of individual who is known to be selfless, to be helpful to others, um, to be willing to help if you are in position to help, however small that may be, it may be just an introduction. It may be a document you can translate. It may be uh, something you, whatever whatever it happens to be but when I was when I had my first job um, at, at SuckerX the business was all about getting people together so I, all, I was always thinking about how could I understand what people are doing who they're trying to meet what relationships they're trying to build and how I can be the conduit to that how can I facilitate even those even those small introductions that can help people do business and, and other things and what happened in the end is that I built relationships um, and eventually one of these people who I built a relationship with called me up five years later and wanted to hire me when he became a chief executive of a football club, right? So I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know um, how, what, what or how it would happen, but I, it didn't matter to me. Uh, it wasn't important. What was important is I, I actually genuinely um, got a lot of satisfaction of the ability that I could, I could be in position to help other people. And that's all. And you know what goes around comes around. It's true in football in the same way. It's true in 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 uh, you know in other aspects of your life. Um, the other point is you know don't be don't be calculated. Don't think as again Urquhart made this make made this point that it's this type of individual can get me this or 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 what's the point or can I be bothered? You don't know. You have no idea where particular introduction. Uh, where that individual could be sort of five, 10 steps away or a few, three, four years away uh, from something that materializes for you. I had a really interesting story when I was at SuckerX. Um, I was always, whenever I, whenever I met new companies, uh, when the new companies called up, I always tried to go out and meet them. I wanted to understand what they were doing, what type of businesses they were in, because for me, it was, it was twofold. I was learning more about the industry and I was, and I was meeting people. And again, you just never know. And one, one time it was a company um, that was in merchandising business and I really got on with them. We just, we just really, um, we just really kicked, um, really got on together. And it turned out that they knew someone, they were very close to a guy who was, who was one of the top producers uh, and uh, TV talents in, in the US. And I came from the US and I knew exactly who he was. And they said, hey, if you don't have anything uh, going on, on on the weekend, um, maybe you can join us at Old Trafford. He's coming over, and I think you and Nick would get on really well. So, okay. So next thing, I'm on the train with this guy, Nick. We meet at King's Cross. We spend all day together. We're on the train. We're at the game on the way back. By the time we came back, it felt like we, you know, we've known each other for 10 years. He says to me, do you know what? I love the way you think about football. We get on well. I, run, you know, I do my shows on, you know, on Fox back in L.A. Next time you're in L.A., you come on and you do a show with me. Three months later, I was in the, it was I was in LA. I was on TV. I was doing a show with him that, that goes out to I think 40 million people, right? So, and once you're on that, you get asked to do. I, I was then asked to do a podcast, and I was asked to do. And eventually, years down the road, I'm co. You know, I'm I'm in the groups of people. I'm co-authoring books and so on. What I, the point being is, you never know where a particular encounter could lead. And that's exactly how you should approach it. Be really open-minded 
embrace, you know, embrace the opportunity to meet someone and see where it goes. And last but not least is, um, you know, the opportunity when you meet people is to really go, you know, go beyond the surface, really genuinely look to get to know people. Because oftentimes when we're, when we're networking, you might go to a networking event and you're thinking about how many, how many business cards you might have gotten or how many people you have you're connected to on LinkedIn. But the reality is there is only so many people we can be connected to and have a relationship with. So, and, it, and that takes an investment. So, and when you're showing interest uh, in people, it demonstrates you go that, that level beyond where you're just another number, um, it becomes a relationship. When it becomes a relationship, so something gets nurtured and nurtured and you know, you're building the types of, you know, it becomes more than just a network. These people are, they're your friends, they're your associates, they could be others. I mean, that's, you know, again, I use the example of David Dean as someone I met many, many years ago just pick, just asked him if he'd meet me for a coffee. And over time, I invested and invested in that relationship to a point where, you know, it's someone who's become like family to me. So um, when you're meeting someone, ask them questions, ask them about their family, about their hobbies, about their favorite teams and things like that. And, and I, I have, a, I have a, a habit of, uh, of course, you can't remember all of these, but I have a habit of saving that, right? So if I, you know, if I have you in my phone, I'll say with that, you know, wife, Laura and kids, so-and-so, they play football. And just because um, I just want to be able to remember next time I'm speaking to someone, I can ask how, you know, how is the family? How are the kids? Are girls still playing football? Are you, you know, you guys still spending your summer in, you know, in such and such place? It's something that elevates you above other people. It demonstrates that you're listening, that you genuinely care, that you remember and I think when you're when you think about network and the most important thing is building the relationship that allows you to then, you know, to then sort of benefit and, and, and really have a, a group of, uh, you know, a group of friends rather than just associates that you're not that connected to. So that's it for me. I know some of these uh, and, you know, Daniel might mention uh, similar ones, but I wanted to put context around it because I think I think that's important. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you uh, very much, Misha. Uh, I think it was fantastic. Uh, thank you, Misha, and especially uh, the first picture <laughs> with your <laughs> with your bags arriving. <laughs> it looks amazing. Well, I, I I I think that you know the I think what's interesting about that is and I why why I use it is that a lot of people when they think about the industry can be quite overwhelming. They think you know, oh, so-and-so must have had an in, you must have known someone or it, or you got lucky and, you know, you will get, you will need certain fortune along the way. But I mean, the point of that picture is I, you know, if you, if you have the will, if you have the desire, if you're genuinely the type of individual who invests in others, you'll find that, you know, you'll, uh, you know, luck, luck will be there for you as well. I agree. You're right. I like the trousers, by the way, and I give the word <laughs> now without you answering. Now, now, it's, out there for, now it's out there forever. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I will watch it later again. So I give the word now to Daniel G, our friend and colleague, and uh, I'm uh, looking forward to hear what he has to say about networking. As you know, Daniel G is one of the leading sports lawyers, not just in England, all over the world. And I'm really curious about his experiences in networking and how he built up. And as you know, he wrote also a book, The Done Deal. So Daniel, you have the word. I mean, you have to, I think you're muted. Um, yes, now we have you. Thank you. So f firstly, thanks very much, both of you guys for some really interesting insights. I, I really love the fact that you know, I think because we've talked a lot with, in all of our time together doing seminars and events and the rest of it, that the, the first thing is it's ultimately that some of the non-negotiables that we talk about are things like hard work and dedication and perseverance and resilience and all that type of stuff. And I think it would be great to go into that in a little bit of detail as well in due course. But I, unfortunately, I decided not to put any slides together against your better advice circuit, so apologies. Um, but okay. what I had was I like to do things in numbers. So I had five points just to go through um, and just give give the um, viewers um, just some of my experiences. So my, my first my first point, which actually is completely uh, raveled into exactly what you said and Misha, what you said as well, is I heard a brilliant quote a few years ago, which said that 
um, you're only as valuable as your invisible network. And I really enjoyed um, that quote for lots of different reasons. Firstly, because um, ultimately, I think a lot of people, when they see things, they only see um, uh, the iceberg or rather the top of the iceberg. They see the, the great visible things that everybody does, that everyone undertakes, the talks that we go on, the TV shows that maybe we do, the podcasts we do, the great events that we get invited to, whatever else it might be. But I think ultimately what is very important, and it's one of my other points as well, is you have to invest in the process for an awful long period of time. And that's one of the things I was going to tell my first story, just in terms of it really resonated what Misha said about that first picture of him with his luggage in 2005. I was exactly the same. I started my legal career in 2005 and um, I started not even doing any sports related work on the whole. Mine was in lots of different sectors as a lawyer to try and get better in that sphere. But what effectively happened when then I joined Sheridan's almost five years ago is that I was worried because my, ultimately my view was, well, um, am I going to continue to be able to um, practice law as a football lawyer? Am I going to be able to do all the great work that I previously was into my new firm? And the thing that gave me a lot of confidence actually wasn't just this like idea of I have a great network or I have good skills or I can do this or I can do that. It was actually um, in the steps that I took to try and put a plan in place for that process. So, for example, what I did, and this is the, the second point, before I moved to Sheridan's and some time before, I more or less, what I tried to do was sketch out my network ecosystem. So what I mean by that is, is that what I tried to do in terms of a business plan, but also in terms of a wider idea, was I took a massive A3 sheet of paper. I know obviously there are different pro computer programs that I use now to be able to do. I took a massive A3 sheet of paper and I split it up into about four different categories, into football clubs, into players, into agents and into other sports tech particular companies. And then what I did is I used my uh, email outlook, I used my phone book, I used my LinkedIn, um, and I used other various tools to actually map out every one of my connections inside and outside of sport. And, it, and I know it sounds like a bit of a strange thing to do, or maybe it is or isn't strange, I don't know, but before I did that, I, I sort of didn't realize actually how substantive my network was. And the point also to consider is you don't need to have best buddy friendships and relationships with everybody. You just exactly as Irk had said, need to maintain the relationship enough so that then people will pick up the phone to you, will have conversations with you, and that can ultimately find mutual benefits um, to having those connections. And so what I then realized in effect was that if I had mapped out the substantive relationships inside and outside of sport that I had maintained, developed, maintained and continued, I then, which then leads on to the third point, needed to develop a pretty um, comprehensive strategy um, for building and maintaining those relationships, exactly how Erk uh, had said. But what I did, because I'm a little bit um, uh, process driven, um, and the same as everybody, I, for example, I remember when I come into your office, the fact, most fantastic thing I see sometimes is across your desk without obviously looking at loads of stuff that's on your desk, is you have lots of different images of um, how particular businesses work, which I love, which is exactly almost the same as what I do in a lot of different ways, which is if, for example, you take one club, it doesn't matter what the club is, and you say, right, I've, I've got a relationship with the chief executive, and I know the head of legal well and I know one of these chief scouts. And then you start building this ecosystem, this spider's web, this network that then allows you to do the next most important thing, which is maintain the relationship. And you maintain the relationship, not by luck of just saying, oh, I haven't phoned that person for one week or one month or six months. You do it by constantly ensuring that however you do it, if the ecosystem is there, or you're putting in, you've got a specific business development program that allows you and reminds you to get in touch with people at a variety of different times. So I have a piece of software that allows me and reminds me to get in touch with the 450 people that are the closest connections within my network that I feel. And it doesn't happen 
by chance. It happens because I am specifically inputting that data. And then those automated reminders are telling me and reminding me to get in touch with that person. Exactly again, as you said, Erka, maybe it might be a phone call. Maybe it might be an email. Maybe it might be a coffee. Maybe it might be a LinkedIn message. Maybe it might be on WhatsApp. Maybe it might be a voice, whatever else it might be. And what happens then is you are able to maintain a huge number of relationships at the same time. Now, I don't want to overawe people, but that's ultimately the, the start of it because ultimately what you've then got to do is you've got to start from somewhere. You've got to start with two relationships, five relationships, 10, 100, 150. And it's easy to maintain five. You can possibly maintain 20 or 30 if your brain's good enough to be able to do it. But when you get to a certain level, it's almost impossible. So you need to put very forensic, strategic processes in place to manage the relationships that you have day to day with people. So that was the, the third bit. And it leads then on to the, the fourth point that, um, that Misha, I think, was really, I was fascinated by what you said generally about, because um, um, I, I do exactly the same um, in terms of then preparation, two things, preparation for meetings and making notes about the relationships that you have. So it's one thing being able to build and maintain the relationship. The next part is actually to be able to have um, substantive conversations with people that matter. And everybody on the spectrum of relationships is different, exactly as Misha alerted to, alluded to. Sometimes I have relationships with um, clients and contacts and individuals that is completely business driven. All it is, is how can I help you and how can you help me? And um, this is all about the business opportunity and the connections and whatever else it might be. They don't want to talk about their personal lives and they don't want to talk about other things outside of the confines of their business relationships. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you also have relationships with people that actually you get on very well with and actually don't want to talk about work at all. And all they want to talk about is where your kids go to school or where you've got a holiday or what's the tennis racket that you've bought or what their interests might be or how you do certain things as well. And usually the truth is most of the relationships you develop tend to be in the middle range of both of those. And that's effectively how you balance all those different types at the same time. But by way of example, what I tend to do when I'm about to have a meeting with someone or a set of meetings with other people throughout a period of time, you've got to spend time preparing for that meeting. It's absolutely vital to invest in every meeting that you have, even if it's five minutes or 10 minutes. It's studying the notes of what the last meeting was, even if it's two or three words or sentences about what actually happened. So that when you go into that meeting, not only are you playing the person, i.e. you know what the person's personality, character traits are like, how they're going to be, whether they're going to be interested in small talk or whether they're going to get right down to business. Um, and then you show your willingness and your assertiveness to, assertiveness to demonstrate that you've been listening. It's exactly what Misha said, that you've been listening precisely to what they have been telling you previously so that they understand you know what they need because it's not about you it's about them and that becomes um, a very important part which then leads on if it's okay then briefly to number five um, which is again I, I, I couldn't I couldn't um, stress it more and what Urquhart and Misha said when we talk about if I go back to the first point, which is the value of your invisible network, the output of the value of your invisible network is the value in your connections for yourself, for building business, but as importantly for others in making introductions and making the right introductions. Because a lot of the time, what you are aiming to do is provide the opportunity and the ability for people, strong people in your network to find opportunities in your network, so long as they are the right opportunities. But ultimately what I've realized from the book that Erka and I've talked about for quite a while, and I'm sure Misha has read as well, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People, which is one of the, the most incredible books that I've, I've ever read. It's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely sensational. Really good, um, yeah. 
and we're not on commission to sell it so you'll be pleased to know <laughs> but um the, the most important bit about that book that i found which was you've got to find the other person's interest and once you find that other person's interest you develop the relationship that way so that you are listening but not just listening so that you have the next question to answer or to ask but you're innately listening so you understand their needs, not your needs. And when you physically and um, mentally understand that what <laughs> conversations you are having are more to do with what they need rather than what you need, the question becomes, instead of what can you, the other person, do for me, it becomes what can I do for you? And that ultimately is probably my, then my last point, the value of connection. So they were my, they're my five initial points just to, just to have to start that conversation. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. I think it was fantastic. I mean, we have two different or three different insights here. And I think for the listeners, I think it's uh, really valuable information how you guys uh, created your network. And uh, we have heard about Misha, what he did, how he ended up in the end, how, how he started in a difficult way and then his whole journey to where he is today, I think I want to remind the listeners, it doesn't happen like this for no one. All of us had a long and difficult and hard journey. We all made mistakes. We all sacrificed a lot of time. We didn't go out. We really, we really spent that time to network, to meet people. As Misha said, he's going the whole way up the mountain, so and back. You know, it's important that you invest the time into people and that you create that network. It doesn't develop from today to tomorrow. It's a long journey, it's a long investment, but it's the right thing to do. And uh, I'm just coming uh, to Misha, and uh, Misha, it was uh, interesting. And uh, you said, like, if you can do help other people, you should help, right? It's a very important message. If you have the ability, if you, if you can do, then you should do. And, and, and you said you had a, uh, you met someone on the way, it was David Dean. How that that kind of, is it becoming more a mentor for you? Because a lot of people, in their lives, they had a mentor. I mean, that question goes for both of you as well. Like you guys had mentors in your life who was there for you and showed you the way, what you should do, put something onto your lives and change it in a right way, in a good way. Um, yes, yeah, it's been, I've, I've been very fortunate to have, I mean, not just David, I mean, David's, David ended up being great, but I think that the interesting, the interesting thing about David and, and the point that why, you know, why I used him as an example is, I think sometimes we we tend to think that there's certain, particularly when we're very when we're just getting in, is that there is no way I could get on someone's radar. I mean, come on. I, I, I mean, when this happened, David was you know, David was the vice chair of Arsenal, the president of G14, the you know, the vice president of the FA. You think what well, this guy's not going to give me time of day? I mean, come on, he's 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 busy enough. Um, so I think you know, and he, and and he, and he did, and and over time. <laughs> that relationship has evolved to the point where, you know, what happens is when, when you, as both of you have, have alluded to, when you connect with people genuinely, when you're interested, because at the end of the day, it's not just about network. It's just about how you connect with other people. Um, what happens is they, you know, you, you start to relate to one another, right? They see you in a different light. And David saw in me and I, I it's someone who, who was ambitious, um, who wanted to do well, who was, who was obviously, who was prepared to work. And he wanted to help. Um, so, and I think, you know, Erkin, I, I know that um, you know, like every time in your office, you have lots of different interns and stuff. You're, you know, you're the same way. A lot, a lot of guys and Jack, Charlie, these guys have been with you for years. It's about, you know, the, um, you, it, when you ask, when you're prepared to ask the question, when you put yourself out there, you'd be amazed at what people are prepared to do, uh, you know, what people are prepared to do uh, you know, for you. I have another um, guy who's a mentor, a friend. He's now, his name's Tim Hinchy. <clears throat> he's now the, the, he's now the CEO of U.S. Swimming, but he was, he was at, um, he's, he's, a, he's been in sport his whole career. But there are some people you'll meet who are, who just connect with you on a, on a as, you know, as Daniel said, sort of on a, on a different level um, where, you know, you become more the way that we are, uh, where it's more than, it's more than just business. It's, 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 it's friendship. And, um, and it's really, really important. It's, 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 it's pretty, these people can be, um, because they understand how you are, they can be very helpful to you as you progress through your career and you can be a, a genuine sound bo sounding board for, 
not just for introductions, but also in terms of the direction that you want to go. Thank you, Michelle. And Dan, can you, did you have yeah. a message in your life? Someone helped you or did there someone, someone there where you looked up or anything was driving you? Tons of people. Um, I remember before I was even a lawyer, <clears throat> there was a, a, a sports lawyer now that gave me his time. Very prominent guy even then, even more so now. Some of the guys that I've worked with uh, at my law firms as well um, have been fantastic with me. Um, I think I think also the other the other side of the coin is, and it's easy to confuse one with the other, is whilst we, we're talking about networking and connecting with people and building relationships, the the other side, which I know we can talk about as well, which is part of the same the same coin or the other side of the same coin, which is you know, in order to invest in your network, your ability to be able to connect with people, you've got to be able to say interesting things, I think, at the end, or to show your your knowledge and your knowledge base in particular areas. So I think in a way that, you know, I hear all the time, I know you do, Erka, as well, and I'm sure Misha does, which says, you know, I want to be a football agent because I love football, or I want to get into sports marketing because I love sports or I want to be a football lawyer because I love football. And that when you delve deeper um, and you ask them, well, why do you want it? It's because, well, I watch tons of football on television every day and I'd love to meet the players and I'd love to do this. When the truth is, is that that might well be the case, but actually they're not going to help you in your quest to try and get a type of job inside sport. The, the way that in my mind, things work better is when people come to me and say, um, I'd love to be a sports lawyer. And I say, great, what, tell me about the things that are interesting in the sports world right now. Tell me about the cases going on, the regulations that are changing, the issues going on generally. And usually it's the exception to the rule that then someone will say, ah, you really should say that's great because um, I read this article about financial fair play or the FIFA ch changes to the transfer system or the employment law issues involving release clauses or whatever else it might be. And the reason why I say all of that is because alongside networking, what is absolutely vital to be able to do is to invest in your own skill set and knowledge base. And I, I might just ask you a question in a second, Erka, just if I finish just one point, which is by then investing in your skill set and knowledge base, what that enables you to do is to be able to then, when you do network with people and have conversations, is that you can talk to them about in-depth matters. Because what ends up happening as, as individuals get more senior and as you know, we, we you know, in, increase our in, in seniority uh, within the industry is unfortunately, because we've got lots of work on, or fortunately, because we've got a lot of work on, we can be quite time poor at times. People, juniors starting out in the industry or even before as students are time rich and their opportunity cost is low, which means now is the time to build that knowledge base. So I'll give you an example. I say to every lawyer that wants to be a sports lawyer, for the next year, there's a brilliant website called lawinsports.com. It has a brilliant set of incredible in-depth articles on the sports and football industry. For the next year, read two football law articles per week and then come back to me. And so far, maybe a few have come back and otherwise, but the point doesn't matter whether they come back to me or not. The point actually is, is that in order to invest in yourself and build your network and strengthen your relationships, you also need to invest in your substantive skill set because that is what's gonna hold you in great stead. And, and if I may, I know we're maybe um, changing track, but I love the story that you tell about proactivity and building the knowledge base that you had when you were in university and you first approached um, a football agent um, to see if they, you could help with them. Would it be worthwhile just two minutes spending time talking yeah. about that? Because I love that story. Of course, I can do it. And uh, thanks, Daniel. It was also a great insight to see. Um, and I mean, for me personally, I realized very early, like, and my family gave it to me as well. And they always uh, implanted something into me. And I said, if you want something from someone, right? give or add value to them so they see your value to them so they will help you they will take your hand and they will go with you 
don't send or don't ask for something just like because everyone else doing the same thing right try to make someone else life better try to help someone else's even if that person is there higher than you now still you can do something to make him better and that was how i thought like i was a, a young uh, law student uh, studying law in germany and i wanted to get into that business badly and i said look i want to become a um, I was like a sports agent, sports lawyer, but I wanted to teach as well. But I needed to get into the industry and through an agency, a good agency, I think that's the place I should go. So I went there and uh, I asked them for an intern. They said, no, obviously I did the same, the normal way uh, first because no one told me how to do it, right? So I, I went there, I asked, can I do an intern? He said, no, no, I was out after five minutes. But he thought I'm there for business. So he kicked me literally kind of out, right, of his offices. And my friends, all of them said, no chance. You will never learn there. He never took someone. And then before I was leaving at the door, I said to him, I will do something for you, which will make you a better agent. And then he was like, it's like, he, well, he was about to kick me out. And then he was looking at me, what do you mean? And I said, I will do something which will make you a better agent, I promise you. So I went uh, and I started writing a magazine, right? I'm just uh, 23, 24 years old. I'm writing a magazine. I was always choosing five topics. A library in the university where I was studying in Osnabrück and my friends were saying, you're crazy. Like, why do you write a magazine for an agency? Who will read that? So I was every weekend, I was spending literally every Saturday, Sunday in that library in the, in the one corner. I still remember where it is, where all the books and some sports law books, some sports magazine, the court decision of Cass in the Switzerland. And I was taking them out and I was writing that all in a language that the agent could understand because obviously he wasn't like that he wasn't from a university so i thought he can't understand the decision of the court if he reads that it's so much i need to make it like simple that he reads it and understands so he gets knowledgeable so i said that's the key so i was choosing five topics how to do for example a contract in spain why is it tax wise better to bring a football player into the basque region the tax issues are easier than to going in the center of spain and so on so, and I was dropping that magazine one month, two months, three months, friends saying, you, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're spending every weekend in the library. For what? And he haven't even contacted you. And I was doing it for six months, right? And uh, in the end, they were saying, just stop doing, you know, he will never call you. And I was saying, look, I'm already a better sports lawyer or a sports agent. I've learned so much during these weekends. I would never, ever put that time into it. You guys went out and partying. I was doing my magazines, right? And in the end, after seven months, I got called by them and I, they gave me a task, which I've done well. And after one year fighting for it, I get into the agency and was allowed to learn. So it's a long progress. Nowadays, I got sometimes uh, uh, emails or something sending their CVs that they take me. And I'm saying, I mean, there must be more than that. And you could be the best graduate from Harvard or Oxford. I don't care where you're coming, what you do. What can you give me? What, how can you help me? How can you help the agency? Check what we have and check what we don't have. What kind of values you can bring on? Are there any people in my agency who doesn't speak a certain language or not from a certain culture you can add on? Think about it. Like people today make this very easy. They send a CV they expect to get in. I think they should do more than that if they want something. And that's a very brief, short version of that, Dan. I hope that's enough. Is it good? It's very good. Good, perfect. I mean, uh, another question I want you to ask both, and then I want to move on with some questions. We have also some questions from people here at Zoom and also at YouTube. We can just go briefly to that is, today or right now, we are in a coronavirus, right? Or COVID-19. Yeah? And uh, it's not that easy to work as we're used to. We were traveling, we were going for meetings. Now we're hanging around at home and trying to still work. And I, I for myself personally, developed a lot during this time, which I, wasn't, which I didn't know. Like I, our team is now working more efficiently with each other. We have every morning at two hours uh, virtually a conference on Zoom or on FaceTime. We're seven of us, we're face-to-face, we're talking, we're, we're becoming better, we're sharing our knowledge. And literally after three weeks, I was like, wow, we did so much. Like it made us stronger. I, I realized you need to use this time the most efficient way to become better. So, and I wanted to ask you both, 
what are you doing? How do you maintain your businesses? Because uh, obviously, Misha, you're the vice president of Mediacom. You have so many contacts and so much work. So many people in the office, they rely on you. And on the same time, uh, Dan, you are the partner of Sheridan's. So many law stuff, cases, especially now even more. So how do you maintain the business? How do you use the, uh, this time to still go on? Misha, I talked too long, so you definitely go for it. Okay. Um, well, look, it's 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 not easy. It's an you know it's an adjustment. But I said to um, you know when when this when this happened in the very beginning, I said, look, we we don't know how long this is going to go on for, um, and we can't really control that situation. So we need to just park that. Um, we have to focus. Every one of you in my team and and, and sort of in our, our regional teams. We have to focus on things that we can control, right? So, um, you know, I think the, the important part was just sort of empowering people, make them feel like they're not uh, they're not victims of the situation. Um, the business is going to go on, and we're going to get there's going to be an impact, but ultimately, um, you know, we still have to. Our clients are expecting us to be, you know, to to be doing what we were doing. We have to start thinking creatively about how our industry is going to evolve. Um, but, it, you know, I think what I did find over the last couple of weeks is I've connected with people, as you just said, Eric, I've connected with people um, and we've gotten closer in a way that, we've, that we, we haven't probably bonded uh, before. It forces, I think, these types of situations, um, you know, perhaps show parts of us that other people don't see where you are and people are working from their, you know, from their offices or bedrooms or, or kitchens, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Um, and I think... It's been, uh, in, in many ways, I think it's it, as terrible as the situation is, I think there will be lots of positives that come out of this in terms of how we, you know, how we use this time. I mean, I ask myself the question, how do I want to come out of this? And, you know, whether it's two months or three months, what areas do I want to improve? Um, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, Daniel, you talked about constantly learning. I mean, it's, you know, for me, it's a constant. You know, I'm always thinking about, what are the areas right now that I can I can upskill? How can I come out of this being more knowledgeable? How does the industry, how is the industry evolving that that I need to be uh, you know that I need to adapt? I'm thinking about how to build you how to build a YouTube channel, right? How does the whole influencer marketing business gonna gonna uh, it, gonna evolve because now this what this demonstrates is influencers have been elevated. We have to be thinking about growth and growth all the time because the only way um, I think it's the only way for us to really kick on and not, not feel like we're, you know, we're being controlled by the situation. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, so, I mean, for, for me, um, what, I would, what I would probably say is just in terms of advice, in terms of um, networking, I'm going to change the question slightly if that's all right, because I you know one of the questions we were going to talk about was what, what should... Um, students or people wanting to get into the industry be doing as well at this time when obviously no one can get face to face which become which is quite which is very important and the thing that always stuck with me was a quote that I read a few months ago which I really enjoyed I, I didn't quite plagiarize but I put it at the bottom of one of my articles which I really enjoyed which was don't worry about being the best concentrate on being the best at getting better and I really liked that quote. And for me, I, I use that quite a lot because um, what I am trying to do is just continually learn. And I agree, I, I've definitely had a little bit more downtime to be able to, I mean, I think I've been pretty busy, but a little bit more downtime to be thinking about what, what books can I be reading in the evenings? What stuff can I be learning from? What stuff do I have online to be able to use and be able to understand and get better at? Um, and the, the other bit is, you know, ultimately for, for people wanting to get into the industry now, there is no, I, I actually don't think there's a better time potentially to be building the network and be putting a plan in place. So I just wrote down two particular things, which was what I did when I was getting, trying to get into the industry is I, I don't know if it's the same with you guys, but every day I probably read 10 to 15 sports articles mm -hmm. on, on my phone. I, I would try to just track it for a little bit of time. And I realized that I tend to read between 10 and 15 articles a day, which is probably quite a lot and maybe says something about my addiction to mobile phone, but that's a different matter. 
Um, and if you multiply that by a week and multiply it by a month and multiply it by a year, I, I didn't even realize it at the time, but that means ultimately that you're developing your knowledge base. I'm developing my knowledge base in sports related matters pretty significantly. And that's just in, in one year. And the reason why that's important is at the time now when it's so easy and possible and all consuming to be able to find all of this great content online, invest in yourself during that period. But you can also do one other great thing, I think, when you're investing in yourself in this period, which is whenever you find an article that really resonates with you, that you really like the style of that writing is great or the topic of that is great or I'm interested in this particular point or whatever else it might be write an email to the person that's written the piece and show that personal interest to show that you've read the piece, that you've digested it, you've understood it, and have got an interesting question to ask as a result. Or just simply to say, great piece, thank you very much, I really enjoyed it on such and such. Multiply that by five times a day over a month and over a year. And very, very quickly, for those that will get back to you and plenty that don't, you will already have a ready-made network of experts in their field talking about particularly interesting areas in the industry of sports. Right. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I mean, uh, what I like about what you said before is about the, how you do your create your network and maintain it. Like it, it's unbelievable how a forensic way you do it. Like I'm, I'm for example, I don't do it that way. And uh, I just try to maintain it, but I learned something today. I should maybe do it like the way you do. If you have that software, <laughs> Misha and me will, will call you afterwards. I, the software you use. <laughs> I used to think that I was networking quite well, but now I listen to Dan. You know, uh, I need to. I need to start from scratch. I need to find my five by three. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, but. One one more question to both of you, and then we will go to the questions of the uh, of the guests at YouTube or at Zoom. So the the final thing I would like to know, like before I ask the question, uh, Dan, just a quick one. Yes, every day is doing something. I totally agree. What I do is I learn a language. So for someone out of you there, because I think language. If you learn more languages, you are more more individuals. I always believed in it. That's why I always put time. So I, every day, I mean, a very uh, free app called Duolingo. Yeah, just download every day, 15 minutes, any language you always wanted to learn. Believe me, after 30 days, the words and sentences you learn in that language, any any language is unbelievable. Yeah, so just the most important thing is do it every day. Even it's 15 minutes. Do it. And you want, uh, for me, to maintain languages, I always use Duolingo. I'm always watching a series in uh, different languages. So I'm trying to watch series in Spanish with English subtitles. So I hear Spanish. If I don't understand, I watch down. So listening to something, reading, playing on Duolingo, it helps to maintain and to learn a language. So this is my advice of someone, because language barrier is unbelievable. If you know a language from another culture, it opens so many doors. Right. Whenever you go somewhere, if you know, and Spanish and English are the two key languages in sports, especially in football. Yeah. If you know very well English and Spanish, take advantage and try to learn more. Never give up and say, I just know two. Just try to learn the third language, the fourth. I mean, this will open you so many doors. It's an icebreaker right away. Right. And yeah, I just go forward. Uh, otherwise, I talk too much. I think you both are looking at me. No, right? I need to tell them about what we do when we were in Mumbai. Do you remember yeah. what happened that literally and Misha, I'm not sure if I've told you the story. So we were we were with each other probably 24 seven for four or five days. Every day, guys, this guy, uh, Erka, even like in the middle of us having a conversation or when we were walking somewhere, he would just get his phone out and start talking phrases in a different language or just be looking at the notes on a particular app. Literally, if there was five minutes spare or five minutes free to do something, you'd just be like, you'd be on it. And it was amazing. So it's like anything is possible. Like even the most, most, one of the most successful agents, it, you know, has done fantastic deals. He's still looking for the opportunities to learn on a daily basis. I was like, I was like blown away that you it, find this little. It is minutes. amazing. When we were, when we were in Nigeria, I was, and it's such a nice, I just, I mean, I just remember thinking about the time, you know, we were, you know, we got met by, 
four or five guys. We were, you know, they, we were taking taking the uh, taking the, the minivan back to the hotel. It's probably like an hour and a half to the hotel. And um, and Erica started talking to them, talking to them in their local, you know, in their local language. I mean, they you should have <laughs> seen, I wish you know, it was dark because we arrived very early in the morning, but you should have seen the expressions on their faces. Like they were, you know, this like the idea that you showed enough interest. And you know what? Like, and I thought to myself that I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure, maybe you're doing it in Duolingo for a week now, but something as simple as just certain phrases to say hello, how are you, good morning, you know, showed them that that you know cared enough um, about the about the place it was coming to and the people it was going to meet to learn the language. And they were, and it just it was like an immediate icebreaker. And by the time we arrived, it's like it's just, it's as if we were all friends. I just you know, it's a it's a fantastic uh, it's a fantastic suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, the, definitely, guys. If you want to learn language, do it. it. Definitely will help you. And the last question to both of you, and then we're going for the questions, is about if someone would approach you after this lesson today. Someone writes you an email, yeah, and want to learn from you. What are you expecting from someone? Literally, we already touched a little bit about that, but I just want to go into deeper. Like, what are you expecting from from, from someone want to join into the business, want to become a sports lawyer? Or want to work in sports marketing yeah so i said like i expect from someone who want to come and learn from me or or who want to go into any other agency add value to these people try to bring something which they don't have what would you recommend and what are your expectations maybe david uh the david i'm saying daniel yeah of course so um the first thing is short and time is generally quite precious the second thing is it needs to be word perfect. There can't be mistakes and spelling mistakes and things that don't work and dear sir, it needs to, it needs to be perfect. The third thing is it needs to be personalized for me. They need to know why they're getting in touch with me and what I do generally. And fourth, exactly the same point. I think you need to be able to come to the show with something. You need to be able to say, this is what I can do because I think it's going to benefit you case report, something interesting, whatever else it might be, the more creative, the better. Hopefully people can see, I, I like creativity. I like things out of the box. I like alternative views on stuff. There's enough content out there of me and or the rest of us to suggest that's the type of thing. So, you know, there's no point sending a vanilla, dear sir, I'm interested in a law job at Sheridan because you're a great sports lawyer. It's just, regardless of whether I am or not, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, um, it's not going to hold water really. It needs to be something which demonstrates a bit more creativity and out of the box thinking yeah i mean i would agree with that and not much to add i think you have to give people a reason to care um you have to you have to remember that that individual myself myself or dan or urkud we probably receive hundreds of emails and hundreds of linkedin invitations and things like that so just keep that in mind and think to yourself what you know how, what are you going to say? How are you going to use that opportunity to really elevate yourself in my mind? I'm busy. I've got things going on. I'm worried about work, whatever. What is it that's going to get you, that's going to get me to think, you know what? I really like this. Really, really like the way this, what this person has got to say. And I, I want to give them 10 minutes of my time. So spend some time thinking about that because more of, it's a simple thing to do. And most people get it wrong. Um, they send a generic email. I think to myself, that email could have been sent to anyone. It could have been sent to Erica, it could have been sent to Daniel. It's so it's it's vanilla, it's plain. Why me? What would you like? Why would and because if you do that, I will certainly try to find the time to you know, and I do spend quite a bit of my time mentoring people. So you just have to give people a reason to care by making it very personal. Thank you. Thanks, Misha. Um, and then, I mean, let's go to some of the questions that we have at Zoom, maybe briefly. I've already read them. And uh, I mean, uh, TA Germany is asking, how can I start the conversation with interesting people who would like to meet? I mean, uh, we, 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 gave, uh, we, we gave so many information out about, you just have to go for it. You just have to, I mean, just answering directly, Misha and uh, Dan, if you want to add something, always add on. And uh, you can go into the Q and A area as well if you see something you want to add. I mean, just 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 go and try. You will do. You will have disappointments if you contact someone, right? But it's a part of the game. It's a yeah. part of the game sometimes to fail. I mean, people are expecting. I talk to someone and then it must be it's it. 
like. Now, it's not like that, yeah? You might do it one time, two time, three, till it works, right? So, I mean, I made so many mistakes and failures in life. People think we, we, we are now in these positions because we made mistakes and failures. We are not there because it went everything like this. It went like up and down, but there we are. It's a long journey. That's you have to understand and don't be afraid of when you contact someone. That's, don't be ashamed or don't be like scared. What would you think about you? You know, just do it. Yeah, because you'll be no worse off. You know, you're, you're, you'll be no worse off than before you started. Remember that. Yeah. The worst thing that happens when you reach out to someone is nothing. Okay. And that's, the, you know, so in the end, you're not going to be any worse off than, than you were. But the best, the best case scenario is someone responds, right? And you have to sort of, unless you, um, you know, one of the one of the things that David Dean taught me many years ago, and you know, yeah, you know, I feel bad because I haven't used any quotes, so now I'm going to maybe use a quote. Um, so he says, you know, he's he, says the, he uses the theory of the of the turtle um, that you don't get anywhere in life unless you stick your neck out, right? So that's what it is. You have to just, you know, if the turtle never stuck its neck out, it would never move. If it sticks its neck out, moves a little bit. So that's how it is. You've got to put yourself out there, and I think. You know the the types of the types of things that resonate with me is is something in that note that actually demonstrates that you know something about me. You know, you may be fascinated about my journey, or you you know you saw an interview. You can reference something that you know that shows that you you've shown interest, right? So I will reciprocate. But if it's something that's generic, and I you know I'm I'm amazed that on LinkedIn you get loads of just it's just nothing. People just want to connect. There's no message, and you never hear from them. Um, you know, maybe one day someone can explain to me what, what, why that is. But it's certainly not the way to build. You know, um, it's, it's certainly not the way to build proper network. Thank you, Misha. Um, I think one uh, interesting question is there as well from Kadir. He's asking, uh, being a lawyer, like for it's more for me and uh, for Dan. Like, is it a, is, is that an advantage in the business? Like, I mean, obviously you are a lawyer, sports lawyer. Of course, you need to be a lawyer if you act as for me. I can just say on my side, having a law education is definitely an advantage. I mean, simple as that, that because uh, you know about contracts more than someone who is not coming from that area. But it doesn't mean for someone coming from outside will be very good in contracts and negotiations. So being a lawyer gives you a good education, a good, you know, a good base. If you can do it, you can do it. I always say it, but it's not like you have to be a lawyer to be a good agent. Yeah, these are two different things. But being a lawyer is an add-on. Like like knowing more languages is an add-on. If you can do it, you should do it. Yeah. I mean, are there some other questions about uh, Dan? They're already asking for the software. How to can get the software? <laughs> I mean, the price of the software is nine hundred ninety-nine pounds. You just write me an email. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, Daniel's a shareholder in the software, but uh... <laughs> look, we'll just take six hundred percent commission, and we'll send the link to everybody. <laughs> How much commission? Six hundred percent. You can go, you can go on DanielG.com, and there is a there is a yeah there is a oh link to Amazon, God. right? Yeah, yeah. So the software, just very briefly, is called Pipe Drive. Pipe Drive. Pipe really Drive. Cool. Yep. Oh, you see? I didn't know. Pipe Drive. Yep. So I'll uh, I'll consent the link afterwards. But yeah, I would really recommend. It. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what others we have on some other question. Um, can I make? Uh, how can I make other intermediaries take me seriously? There's someone. Yeah. Yamburini, man like Yamburini. The name is interesting. Man like Yamburini. I mean, like, again, it's uh, to make others take you serious. As again, you you have to try it. I mean, we said it today so many times. And again, this is one thing. Some some club, some club officials might not take you serious, but some will, right? And it's also about the value of the player as well. And I always say, as an agent, like, if you have a valuable player you represent, then of course clubs will listen to you. But if you don't have a valuable player, then of course it's very difficult to bring this player to a club. Yeah, it's like same with brands on the brand side. If you have a good brand, if you have a good match, it works probably easier, right? Or I mean, that's very important to understand. Um, so this is inspiring, Misha. Thank you, Misha. There's a lot of inspiring Misha here. 
Uh, I thought we were quite good as well, Erkut, to be honest. Yeah, I think, I don't know why everyone is saying Misha was the first. I mean, Dan, you and me did a good job as well. I mean, like... It's storytelling. Your, that's what we're, your that's family. What we do. Your family on the call, Misha, is that why? <laughs> I see these are all Misha's contacts at YouTube, all writing about that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's the marketing guy. Dan, we that's can't right. win. That's right. He's, he's a we're marketing. Story. He knows, you know. <laughs> Storytellers. Uh, exactly. What that uh, spot on, but what happens when you deal with setback after setback in pursuing this career and you have exhausted all your finances but didn't get anywhere? So again, as someone who fell down and again and again and couldn't make it, yeah, so it's Mazen AC. I mean, look, it's, it's again, like you need to fall maybe one more time. You don't know it. I've, I've met so many people in this business. They were so close. They were so close to making it and then they left because they were afraid of failing. They were afraid of people in the family or friendship listening and hearing, oh, he failed. They were more concerned about people talking about him than he about himself. A lot of people have that. Oh, what would my family members say if I fail? Oh, what would my friends say? The community, the village where you live. So don't think about that. You know, this is one, one thing I can give you on your way. You are your own way, you do your own way be with positive people, not with negative people. Negative people always drag people down. Try to surround yourself with people who have dreams and visions who help you. And you might fail another 10 times. So, but then you will make it. In the end, you will make it, I promise you. Don't give up, never ever. Just these moments, I promise you, and I promise everyone else, will make you who you will become in future. You will go, you will look back. You know, you will look back. We had all financial problems. Uh, we had all mistakes. So, but that these times to stay strong will make you what you will become not just the ones who remain and don't give up will become successful in life yeah it's very important i don't know if you guys want to add something on that no, awesome. no i think that's that's great yeah i think we are done i think we're over time anyways we're 18 minutes over time we are still a lot of people watching it but uh i don't want to stretch it too much you both uh thank you for your time misha fantastic i mean the marketing Thanks, uh, expert then we have a lawyer with dan amazing uh, sports lawyer and friend i think i enjoyed personally a lot today it was fantastic talk and uh, we laughed a lot we hopefully the students learned a lot or everyone else who wants to get into the business someone who's already in the business i think what i my clothes or uh, just the last thing for yourself um did you like it is something you want to add on to finish this no, look, it's been, it's, um, first of all, thanks, thank you both. It's always, it's always uh, very enjoyable doing things together. Um, and, um, you know, for us to be able to do something like this in, in the current, you know, in the current climate. Um, look, it's, you know, like, I guess all I would, um, all I would say is, uh, you know, it's an investment. Networking is, a, is an investment you make and it's an investment in yourself and it's an investment in your future. So you can't really, there's, you you can't really um, go wrong with it. You'll learn a lot about the industry. You'll build relationships. You'll make friends, and you'll further your career. So hopefully, you will have heard some really useful tips today uh, from all three of us that you can apply. So thank and thank you for tuning in. Then, yeah, then, then you have the final word, and then we will close. I won't say anything anymore. I just say thank you to everyone for tuning in today. And uh, I will leave the final words for Dan and then we will close. And I say, I will just leave it with saying, put someone else. So what I will always say, make someone else's life better. Believe me, you will be successful in life. That's my closing chapter. And Dan, please, you are the master, close this. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think all I would say is like from everything that we've, we've said today is trust the process, trust the process of what you're doing except you're in it for the long haul. It's not a short term thing. And the rewards will ultimately flow because you never know what opportunities that you make maybe around the corner. Excellent. Well Excellent. Done. Thank you and thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. That's Good night. 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 Good night.